All right. Okay, so uh, without further ado, uh, let me start uh, my presentation. So I will be giving a talk about uh, copula-based pairs trading strategies and uh, more about me. I am currently a PhD candidate in applied mathematics at University of Delaware. And uh, here's my LinkedIn, here's my Twitter. Uh, I will send the slides at the end of the presentation so you will have access to them. Right, and a brief uh, introduction about my research interests. Uh, my PhD is on stochastic modeling on uh, aggregation of uh, micro swimmers. So uh, a lot of uh, Markov chain uh, Monte Carlo, uh, Fokker Planck equations, and a lot of PDE methods and numer uh, numerical PDEs. But uh, I am also uh, interested in stochastic methods in finance. So uh, copula methods and stochastic control, those are the things that uh, I'm currently working or will be working very soon. Right. Okay, so here is uh, what I'm going to talk about today. So at first, I'm going to introduce you uh, sort of at a ramp for people who has not seen uh, what copula is, um, giving, giving you an experiment about uh, why we need to use copula, what kind of problem, what kind of questions uh, is copula trying to address. And then we're going to talk very, uh, very briefly about the mathematics. And then we're going to talk about the strategies and uh, interesting works that, uh, 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 that copula can be applied to. All right, and uh, first thing I need to disclaim that uh, copula itself is a pretty uh, vast subject in uh, probability theory or applied probability uh, theory. So there's quite a lot of analysis to get done. And uh, I don't wanna turn this into a mathematical uh, seminar presentation. So I will keep uh, the math minimum uh, to keep it uh, attached to the strategies, all right? And uh, the strategy itself is pretty straightforward to understand once you understand uh, what a copula is. Uh, strategy is basically as simple as it can be, all right? And uh, copula is still a relatively uh, novel uh, field. Uh, not many people are in this uh, genre for pairs trading. There are a lot of people uh, using the copula for uh, CDO pricings and risk management, uh, but um, this module is also uh, built on the uh, assumption that some people might use this for other purposes, so you can play around uh, with it for uh, using the arbitrage lab. Right, so let's uh, at first try to solve a mystery. So let's say that you are a quant trader, right? And you see uh, two stocks, they're historical uh, data, uh, all right? So they look like a bell shape and they look symmetric, right? So uh, you did some statistical tests and they showed that they are uh, normal. And because you want to do pairs trading uh, based on them, so a natural question to ask is, uh, what's the relationship between those two? What's the joint, uh, what's, what's the joint distribution? Right, a natural thing to think is because one is normal, another is normal. So uh, we assume that, uh, or you assume that uh, the joint is a uh, bivariate normal. So the question is, if one of the random variable is normal and another is also a normal, uh, when you combine them together, uh, does it form a bivariate normal, right? And the question, uh, the answer is no, all right? So because it's no, because the answer is no, uh, we want to know how far away uh, or how true is this assumption? Like, is it really, uh, uh, does it really deviate, uh, does it really deviate, deviate away from the, um, uh, from the truth? How far uh, are we away uh, from the truth? Okay, so instead of looking at the prices, uh, at first, let's try to look at the quantiles. Right, let's look at the QQ plot. Uh, one of the reasons that uh, you want to look at the QQ plot is uh, it's slightly less susceptible to uh, outliers. And also it sort of normalizes the data between uh, zero to one, right? Because when you change things to quantile, uh, let's say you are doing a uh, one variable change, right? So um, it will become uniform uh, to zero and one. All right, and that's, that's just much uh, nicer to handle with compared to uh, a lot of uh, different combinations of um, uh, marginal distributions. So for example, if you have two socks and one is a normal, another is a uh, beta distribution, right? Or one is a beta, another is some other distributions. There are just so many combinations. It's very hard to handle it. All right, so uh, if it's generated from a bivariate Gaussian kernel, uh, you will generally see plots like this, all right? And however, uh, in, in reality, you will more or less see something that looks like the right-hand side. So uh, what does it mean? Like, what's the difference? So a key difference that you can observe here is there are some aggregation behaviors at the corners. So for example, this one especially is at the lower left corner. So uh, realistic, realistically speaking, what does this mean? That means, okay, so if you are 
plotting uh, the quantile quantile of the prices. That means there are a lot of uh, code movements downward uh, in terms of the prices, which is uh, what you will usually see together uh, in the market, right? Because when the market goes down, everything goes down and the correlation between uh, different stock pairs, uh, they uh, increase by quite a lot. And uh, upward, sometimes you will see uh, aggregations, but generally it's uh, much less pronounced as the uh, lower left ones. Uh, why so? That's because generally when the market goes up, not everything goes up, right? But when the market goes down, everything goes down. So uh, that's generally just what happens uh, in the uh, in the market. Of course, it depends on different uh, stocks specifically, but uh, in reality, this is what uh, you will usually see for the for the QQ plot. Okay, so let's uh, try to summarize what kind of uh, questions uh, or problems does the copula try to address and what went wrong in our uh, mystery solving uh, procedure. All right, so the first thing is uh, if you have marginal Gaussians, uh, you cannot make a joint Gaussian. This is just straight out uh, not true. A lot of people make those mistakes. Uh, and uh, this one probably also caused the 2008 financial crisis because people use the Gaussian copula to model pretty much everything, which doesn't account for the uh, code mo movements uh, on the tails, which brings us to the uh, tail dependency. So uh, what, what's tail dependency? So this is a part of the non-linearity dependency structure between uh, two random variables, uh, especially at the lower left corner and at the uh, lower uh, and the upper right corner. So those are uh, those means that uh, around the tails, they move uh, together much more often. So copula is very good at modeling the uh, tail dependencies. And actually that's one of the reason why copula was uh, initially created in the 40s and 50s to model those kind of behaviors. Right, so the solution is uh, to use copula and uh, we're gonna apply copula for pairs trading. But at first, let's try to uh, understand the mathematical concept of copula. So what does copula mean? What does it do? All right, so copula uh, in Latin, it means link, like chains uh, linked together, right? So, so at first, let's try to get data from two uh, random variables. So let's say uh, S1 and S2. Uh, so we can think about, of those as uh, stock prices. You can think of those as uh, like returns. You can think of those as um, uh, just prices of any securities, right? And the second thing is you want to map them to the quantiles, uh, U1 and the U2. So U1 and the U2, there will be uniform uh, in zero and one using their uh, marginal uh, cumulative density functions. And then you try to calculate the uh, joint cumulative density on the quantiles. All right, so um, th th this is the thing that we try to calculate. And then we denote this as capital C, which is uh, the copulous uh, definition, right? So right now, if I plot this, uh, usually we'll look something uh, like this in 3D, right? But you can see here, this shape is not very interesting. It's just something that uh, looks like a slope and monotonically uh, goes up, uh, which makes sense because uh, you can see this is a joint cumulative density. So you uh, generally, if you move uh, U1 and U2 larger, this one will get closer and closer to one, right? So uh, we will not use the definition uh, for uh, pairs trading uh, at all, right? But this is very important to know because everything uh, derives from here. Okay, so what do we use? First, the thing we use is the uh, probability density or the point-wise density of the copula. That's how the uh, QQ plot uh, was formed. All right. So, uh, so here, uh, how do you calculate the how how do you calculate the point-wise density? Is by taking partial differentiations of the uh, two variables uh, respectively. You will get the uh, probability density. Uh, how is this used? This one's generally uh, used for uh, maximum likelihood fitting for the copulas to data, uh, as probably with other um, statistical models that uh, you just uh, multiply all the uh, densities together and take a logarithm. So you can have the uh, log maximum likelihood. So this one's used for fitting. And uh, the next one is used for uh, trading mostly. All right, and uh, it's the conditional probability. Right, so you can see that here, you just take the uh, differentiation, partial differentiation on one of the uh, variables, you will uh, achieve the cumulative conditional probability. Okay, so uh, what does this tell us? Uh, if you look at the right-hand side, this is the uh, density plot, and I just look at the slices. So for example, if I let V equal to 0 0.3, you can see here is uh, very dense, you get much less dense, and you get uh, much, much, much uh, less dense. Right, so you can see here, uh, this is how uh, it's formulated. And similarly, if you fix, uh, if you fix V, 
uh, okay, so sorry, the first one is when you fix u equal to 0 0.1, and the second one is when you fix v equals to uh, 0 0.3. So you look at the slices uh, in this way, and you will see, uh, uh, you will see a shape like this. The first one is uh, the right-hand side shape. Okay, so those uh, conditional probabilities are the things that we'll be using for, uh, uh, for the pairs treating. And uh, technically, this is the only part uh, that you need to understand by heart to use uh, copulas for uh, pairs trading and everything else uh, is handled in the back end. You don't need to worry about how those are fitted unless you want to uh, dig into details and uh, modify the code by yourself. Uh, but uh, the conditional probabilities will tell you the uh, relative mispricings of the copula, which is something that we are talking about now. Okay, so imagine that uh, you have C some data, all right, and uh, you convert them to their quantiles, uh, U1 and U2. Right, and the capital U1 and capital U2, those are the random variables. So at first, let's just look at those for example. All right, so uh, if the conditional probability uh, of capital U1, smaller than or equal to small U1, given that capital U2 is equal to U2, so is some number smaller than 0 0.5, what does that mean? So uh, remember that those are cumulative, uh, those are cumulative uh, probabilities. So you add up all the densities. So if I add up all the densities, all the bars up until here, that's some number smaller than 0 0.5, right? And if I add up all the densities together, it should be one. And if it's something smaller than 0 0.5, so for example, it's like, let's say 0 0.2, you can see that uh, this dashed line, which is uh, where the prices lies currently, is smaller than uh, what we generally consider the uh, average, right? So therefore stock one is considered to be uh, undervalued. So very similarly, if you look at the uh, second equation, all right, and you will see that the stock one in this case is considered to be overvalued because all the densities adding up together right here, all the areas uh, for the bars adding up together is greater than uh, 0 0.5. And this is indeed considered to be a, a relatively larger price. Okay, so the thing is how do we um, combine those two together to give us a, a strategy? All right, so uh, strategy number one is we just do uh, simple thresholds on the prices. We can use log prices as well. It will give you the uh, identical results. And indeed, when we are plotting the results, generally uh, we plot the uh, log prices, right? Because the stocks one may have generally be around the prices of 100, another may be uh, around the prices of like uh, 30 or something. And if you normalize them by using uh, logarithm prices, that's a lot better. Uh, so copula since it works on the quantiles, generally just compares which number is larger, right? So it doesn't really matter if you use uh, prices or log prices, it will give, it will give you the, uh, the uh, identical results. So that's nice, but uh, to make things easier to understand, let's right now just stick to uh, prices at first. At first, uh, let's fix on the consensus uh, because we're doing pairs trading, right? So uh, we want to figure out how we define the spread. So the spread is stock one minus uh, stock two uh, multiplied respectively with their uh, specific uh, hedge ratios. You can choose different assumptions on the hedging strategies, but uh, let's say that gener gener generically speaking, you have uh, H1 and H2. Okay, so now uh, let's look at the first item. So this is when we want to uh, loan the spread. So uh, here in the first case, we have previously agreed that uh, when the conditional probability is smaller than 0 0.5, that means it's undervalued. So here is smaller than 0 0.05. So therefore S1 is really undervalued. And similarly, if you look at the right-hand side, it's greater than 0 0.5, right? Actually here is 0 0.95. Uh, so S2 is uh, very overvalued. And you can change the numbers in the module by, uh, by yourself and you can change the logic as well, but we'll get that uh, very soon. So right now let's just try to understand what this means. So in this case, if S1 is undervalued, S2 is overvalued, the natural thing to do is you want to buy S1 and sell S2 for a, a mean reversion bet, right? So when you buy S1 and sell S2, that means you want to loan the spread, right? So I uh, hope everyone uh, is able to follow along with me. Here. So now let's look at the uh, number two term, All right? So here you can see that following the same argument here, uh, S2 becomes undervalued and S1 becomes overvalued. So therefore uh, we want to short the spread. And uh, the third thing we look at is when do we want to exit the position? 
right? So when both conditional probabilities, they cross the boundary of 0 0.5, that means previously whether, uh, one of, whether they are uh, undervalued or overvalued, we consider that position no longer valid as well. And here in the module, we can tweak this number as well. Uh, to make the band cross instead of just a single number cross. And uh, when this is satisfied, we will exit the position. And uh, a very nice note, uh, a very important note to, um, to uh, mention here is this result is very sensitive uh, to the logic, right? And um, if you change this and into an or, it still makes logical sense, but the performance uh, will vary by quite a lot. And I do provide uh, those changes for you, to, uh, for you to make them in the code. From the uh, from from the uh, direct um, from the direct API uh, from the user interface, you don't have to dig into the source code to change those. So there are a lot of things to play with, um, and it's actually quite fun to see uh, how little changes like this. If you change this into an or, uh, sometimes it uh, similarly uh, sometimes um, seemingly previously before the change, it might make money, but if you change this into an or, it may not make money. So those logics are uh, extremely important. <clears throat> okay, so how do we use this? Uh, I am the author of these uh, of this module, and I try to make this uh, as minimum as possible so that you don't uh, have too many uh, things to, uh, to, uh, to, to try to lay on top of each other, All right? So at first you import uh, those modules and then you build a strategy um, class and then you train the uh, strategy with the training data. So for example, here I use the prices, right? And I try to fit a student T copula and you can use an and exit logic, which is uh, by default. You can try to target down as well. You can try to change the uh, open thresholds. Um, you can change the uh, open thresholds numbers. You can change uh, that to other numbers as well. And the or exit logic is uh, given right here. You can toggle it on and they will give you uh, different positions. And this is what generally uh, it looks like. So those are uh, reposition log prices. So they all start from uh, zero in the beginning, right? And you can see they look like this. And the positions uh, suggested by an N13 copula is that uh, you take a short here and then you close the position here. So clearly this makes money. And similarly for student T copula, uh, you will see uh, a very similar behavior as well. So this strategy is relatively uh, robust. Uh, as compared to uh, strategy number two, which, will, which we will see uh, very soon. And uh, this is the equity curve. And here's another note why the OR exit strategy is uh, a bit better. Um, you can see here that we have the CFG, which is a type of copula. This is a mixed copula and uh, it uses an AND exit logic and uses an uh, OR exit logic. So you can see the AND exit logic doesn't uh, exit soon enough right, as compared to the OR exit logic. So we generally suggest you to uh, use the um, OR exit logic, but if there's, for some reason, you want to use the AND logic out here, uh, we do provide that option. So it totally depends on you. Okay, so let's talk about some of the issues for the strategy number one. Uh, the first one is uh, remember that the copulas, uh, when we're fitting them and when we're using them, we look at the prices quantiles. We look at the quantiles. Here specifically is about the uh, prices and generally prices, they're not stationary. And because we're looking at quantiles, so after some period, you might see the prices hit the quantiles one, 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 again, again, again. That's generally because uh, stock prices, they uh, generally goes up if it's a uh, good company, right? And um, there are a few ways to fix this. Uh, one obvious way to do this is uh, when you are selecting the pairs, you try to, uh, for example, run like a Hersey exponent or do some other uh, stationary uh, statistical test to try to make sure that the, the, the pairs that you select, they have a relatively more stationary uh, behavior. Second thing is you can just try to update the training set much more often. And then for example, instead of using a whole year uh, for the, for the uh, for the test, you only use like one month for the test, or you just chain until yesterday and just plug in today's data and see how it goes. Right. This is the second way. The third way is you can minus the uh, the trend line, but uh, if you want to do that, then you need to change the strategy's uh, behavior fundamentally. All right. And uh, well, I will uh, probably write a blog post about how to how to do that as well because that's. Uh, as simple as it sounds, but mathematically, it's actually uh, you need some you need to 
go through some uh, plumbing of uh, mathematical analysis to uh, understand how to really tweak all the uh, logics to be able to make the uh, logic consistent. The second one is some of the prices series, they're really hard to fit. So for example, uh, here you have uh, Apple and BA, uh, what's BA, Bank, I think it's Bank of America. And this is uh, the last nine years of prices. And I just plug, uh, I just plot the uh, QQ plot together. You can see that uh, they have, uh, for example, local aggregations, right? And they have a symmetry. And uh, one thing to keep in mind that copula is generally used by uh, probability uh, theory people and by a lot of analysts. So they want to do an analysis uh, on their hand. So therefore, therefore, they generally assume a lot of uh, rigid shapes on the copulas, right? Uh, mixed copulas, you can do uh, a bit more uh, things with flexibility, but generally they are symmetric. They don't have local aggregations uh, other than uh, maybe at the corners. Right, so therefore, uh, if you want to fit this to a copula, none of the copula is going to look something like this. All right, and if you do, if you want to mix like 10 different copulas together, you might have like an issue of uh, overfit as well. So this is generally a concern that uh, even if you fix the prices, make sure that they uh, don't blow up the roof all the time, you might still see some issues going on. So what do people do? Uh, for example, you can look at the returns. The returns are generally considered to be uh, stationary because they just bounce around zero. So it's, uh, it's a lot easier to, uh, to use. And you can see the uh, result is indeed uh, much more uh, regular. Okay, so now let's do a quick review about our strategy one. Uh, two disadvantages, the prices are not uh, stationary and uh, the prices series are hard to fit as we have discussed. And there are two advantages. The first one is it's really simple and it's very easy to tell people what it, uh, what it is. Uh, I know that, for example, if this is your first time uh, seeing the copula, those kind of stuff, this might not look as simple as it sounds, but uh, trust me, this is basically as simple as it can get. And if someone wants to take the time to understand how to think in quantiles uh, in the copula world, um, this is generally the, the first strategy that uh, you're going to come up with. And uh, the second one is the uh, performance uh, is very robust. So for example, uh, you can fit a price series with different types of copulas. And if you choose them by, for example, maximum likelihood or by information criterions, usually the top candidates, they don't differ by quite much uh, as regard to, uh, in regard to their uh, performance. So this one is really robust. Okay, so now let's move on to uh, strategy number two. As we have discussed, uh, we're gonna work on returns instead. Uh, so right now we fundamentally address the issue that the uh, prices are not stationary, right? So we call this the MPIs, uh, mispricing indexes. So what are they? Uh, so previously we have calculated conditional probabilities on prices. This is just calculating conditional probabilities on returns. So it's just a fancy name. Uh, so I just call them, uh, or people just call them NPIs. Okay, so uh, here the small r's, those are, um, those are observation data of uh, stock X and stock Y, and the capital R's are the random variables. And uh, another thing to keep in mind is uh, when you are working with the returns to trade, uh, to trade stocks, uh, you need to change the returns info into prices info, right? Because uh, when you're trading, you make money or lose money based on uh, the prices of the stocks. You don't look at the returns and say that you, uh, you make a crap ton of money out of that, right? Uh, because, uh, because they're traded on prices. So uh, what do you do? So uh, you cumulatively uh, add them up and uh, we're gonna call this result to be the flag and uh, they are called the cumulative uh, MPIs, so CMPI. Another thing is when you are adding them up, so for example, uh, at day zero, you calculate the MPIs, all right, you need to minus them by 0 0.5. Why do you need to minus them by 0 0.5? That's because uh, those are conditional probabilities uh, in essence, and you need to minus the average so that you can see things bouncing around zeros instead of seeing things bouncing around uh, some moving average number that keeps going up on average. Right, so it's just much easier, uh, much easier to see and much uh, easier to think because generally you think if something is greater than 0 0.5, then that's considered to be overpriced. If something that's smaller than, uh, no, sorry. If something is greater than zero, then that's considered to be overpriced. 
if something is smaller than zero, that's uh, considered to be underpriced. That's much easier, easier to think than uh, thinking about something that keeps going up. All right, so uh, how do you cumulatively add them up? So every day uh, you minus the average, all right? Minus, uh, minus the average is 0 0.5, and then just add that to the yesterday's uh, cumulative sum. So you cumulatively sum them up. And uh, of course you start from zero as well. <clears throat> Okay, and this is not the whole story. The real flag series without the stars, uh, they will be reset to zero whenever there is an uh, exit signal and you'll see uh, very soon why. Okay, so now let's talk about the uh, rules, uh, how, uh, how the position gets open, how the position uh, was exited and how to reset. All right, so this whole thing was framed under a dollar neutral strategy. Uh, why dollar neutral? That's because uh, you're trading on the uh, returns. So you want uh, instant rebalance to shield you uh, away from the, uh, the market at first and then to instantaneously reflect the um, mispricing levels between the two. So you want a dollar neutral strategy to uh, hedge uh, at the moment when you open the trades. So that's uh, what the dollar strategy, what the dollar neutral strategy uh, is used for. Okay, so uh, here's a lot of words. So I'm just gonna guide you through uh, one here and one here. So you can uh, work the rest out by you. The, the logic is, uh, is very similar. Okay, so when flag X reaches uh, 0 0.6, uh, you can change the number as well, of course. Here's just, uh, just there, for example. Then uh, X stock is considered to be uh, overvalued. So therefore you short X and buy Y in equal dollar uh, amounts. So to, to make a dollar neutral. All right, so when do you exit? So when X is no longer mispriced, we want to exit, right? So here, when the trades are opened based on uh, flag X, then close if flag X returns to zero. So therefore it's no longer mispriced or when the reach is plus or minus two. Okay, so this is something new. Uh, what does this mean? Um, remember that we are trading based on the flags. We're not trading based on the uh, prices. The flags is model dependent. So here, this is an issue that how much should you trust the model, right? So if the model uh, keeps, uh, if the flag X keeps going up and up, and uh, if it reaches like, let's say five, you should really question that, uh, is it really gonna converge, right? So this is really just a cut loss sanity check that when this, uh, when, when, uh, when it has moved too far away from zero, there's something needs to be done. So for example, you can exit uh, the position um, so in my code, I do allow you to, um, uh, to, what's the word, to, uh, I do allow you to um, toggle this off so that uh, you can try, uh, you can try to put in different numbers. Uh, for example, you can put in uh, NumPy infinity out there so that uh, you will never trigger uh, those two. And uh, the third one is the reset rule. So you want to reset uh, the flags to zero when you exit because uh, it will consider to be a fresh start since you are using a dollar neutral strategy, right? Okay, so this is how it looks like. The uh, IO is very similar to the uh, previous one, all right? And I try to make it as minimal as possible. Uh, here you have a, a new uh, function that uh, you might want to use because it's a dollar neutral strategy. So I coded a uh, converting the positions which are uh, plus minus one and zeros into uh, dollar neutral uh, units of how much uh, units that you want to hold. So it's easier to do back tests and you can change the multiplier as well. For example, uh, here is for $10,000 investments. So just multiply everything by uh, 10,000. Okay. And this is the performance that you will see uh, under the uh, original suggestions by the authors. Uh, I have added other choices for you to play with as well, but let's let's just go through one example and see uh, what this is. So those are the flag series, all right? So they look seemingly that they are me reverting. So you all might be thinking, uh, what does the person mean when uh, he's saying that it's not me reversion? This looks me reversion. Okay, so remember that when it passes by 2.0, will reflect to zero if the position was open based on it, right? So a lot of those mean reversion behaviors it's actually a uh, fake mean reversion behaviors because uh, they goes by and get close to zero and just directly close the position and gets back to uh, gets back to zero. So uh, this is the issue. And uh, another, and uh, we'll discuss the issue uh, very soon. So right now let's look at the uh, equity curve. 
right? So the BK, the BKD prices and the ESC prices, uh, when they're normalized, uh, they look like this. And those are the results given by the two uh, copulas. And you will see that they sort of follow the same shape, but they're not very closely tracking with each other. That's because uh, the flag series, when it's generated from the copulas, those are uh, model-based. So you are building the strategy based on top of a model. So that's why uh, it's actually quite sensitive to the uh, copulas that you choose. All right, so now let's talk about the sensitivity. Uh, you can see here that in April and in May, they flip the positions uh, very often, right? And uh, it, Remember that this is just using end of the day data every single day. So uh, in April and May, I think it's around like, uh, I don't know, like 21 days of trading, something like that. And you have flipped positions one, two, three, four, five, six times. That's, that's way too much. And that means this is very sensitive. And so therefore you need to uh, change the logics as compared to the uh, original strategy proposed by the author. So uh, let's talk about uh, how do we do it? So if you look at the opening rules, so the first one says that uh, when should you short X and buy Y. The last one also says that when should you short X and buy Y. So opening rules here, uh, as suggested by the author, it says that when any of those two is satisfied, you do a short. And essentially that means it's an or logic, right? And you can change this or into an end that will make the uh, situation much more robust. And I provided that option there as well. Exit rules here is the same thing as well. So here it says when any of those two is satisfied, you exit the rules. So that means um, you exit the uh, position. So that means this is also an uh, or logic. And the third part is you can choose whether you want to reset uh, the zeros uh, when uh, when you exit. So here, when you return to the zero, you don't need to reset it. Uh, but when you reach this plus or minus two, you want to reset it, of course, right? Where you choose, you may choose not to. So those are all the uh, parts that you can play with. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the disadvantages of this one. Uh, I'm gonna be a little bit harsh on this because um, this method is used very often by uh, in combining with uh, other methods uh, in the copula trading uh, strategies. And especially multiple pairs trading, this is like ex exclusively used. Uh, and there are some disadvantages. Uh, the first one is uh, the flags, they vary by copula, and this one is model-based. So therefore, uh, it's uh, much less stable compared to something directly work on the prices, right? And the second part is there are a lot of moving parts in the logic. So there are a lot of things to uh, tweak around with. You need to uh, explore them by yourself, right? But this one also adds a lot of flexibility, which is one of the uh, advantage. So that's nice. The third one is the uh, raw flag series, the cumulative mispricing indexes. Uh, they're very likely to behave like a martingale uh, based on our uh, experience and tests, but they're not necessarily um, mean reverting. So martingale doesn't mean you will uh, revert back to zero, but you are betting on it's gonna revert back to zero. So that's something uh, logically a little bit inconsistent, right? And the fourth part is when you are using some versions of the logic. So for example, if you're using the uh, OR logic as given right here, it's not very clear that uh, how to handle when both stocks are underpriced and overpriced uh, concurrently at the same time, right? Do you sell them or do you uh, do long the spread or do you short the spread? That's that's not very clear right here. And this happens uh, semi-often in the uh, if you use real world data. Right, so now let's talk about the uh, advantages. So the returns, they are mean reverting. And uh, second thing is dollar neutral. So you have a lot of protections against the market movements, right? So it's less of like a beta hedge, but uh, but uh, but this is something much better than hedging probably like every, uh, every three months, right? And uh, the third one is it's very flexible uh, because you have a lot of moving parts. That's one of the uh, advantage of this. And uh, the fourth one is it's a building block for a lot more complicated strategies, right? So for example, you can use this for uh, multiple pairs trading. So here we only talk about copulas of two variables, but copula, you can extend it, that to arbitrary number of uh, variables, right? So, so for, example, for example, three, four, or five, so that you can exploit the um, mispricings when you have five stocks together. And those are the field that there are much less players so, uh, and we have, and I have built some um, Vine copula models as well, which will not be uh, discussed today because that's quite complicated and it's another totally different topic. 
But uh, with Vine Copulas, you will see the alpha is much better than those two uh, strategies, strategy one and strategy two. And if you want to see more critiques, uh, you can read uh, this paper, uh, Rad et al. in 2016 for more critiques on this method. All right. So he summarizes all the things that I have uh, said over here and uh, raised other issues uh, as well when uh, dealing uh, and analyzed, uh, I think it's a cohort of all the stocks from like 1940s or something. All right, and let's talk about uh, interesting works uh, for people who are uh, keen on uh, exploring things with the copula. All right, so the first one is, uh, remember that the copula um, handles random variables. Random variables are not necessarily uh, time series, right? So a little bit uh, more general. So the time series, it has a very important thing is which one comes first, which one comes last when you look at the data. And uh, copula doesn't, doesn't do it, it just directly looks at quantiles. So what that means is, uh, so for example, if you have prices right here, right? And if I just shuffle them by the dates and when I want to train them in the training set, I will get the exact same copula because it doesn't look at the time series. It just directly looks at the data and see the quantiles. Second one is a uh, vine copula. So what is a vine? So a uh, vine in English means it's something that, uh, something that connects uh, a lot of fruits together or, or uh, it's just type of plants, right? So you can think of, instead of connecting different fruits, uh, it's connecting different random variables and uh, under some uh, graph theory, right? So that's uh, much easier and uh, much more robust. And uh, since the playground is uh, relatively scarce uh, right now, there are not many people in there. So uh, there are a lot of chances to uh, generate great alphas with the vine copulas. But this one is another thing that you just have to understand what it is to be able to use it, right? It's not something that you can just pump the coding and treat, uh, treat it as a uh, black box. You have to fundamentally understand what that is to be able to uh, make money on this. The third one is copula for high, fre uh, high frequency trading. Uh, why is copula uh, useful for high, uh, for high frequency trading? That's because, okay, so when you are trying to fit a copula, that takes quite a lot of time, right? That's generally not in the time scheme of uh, high frequency trading. But when you're calculating it, generally it's really, really fast because all of those are uh, analytical as far as uh, the copulas that we're currently working with now. The calculation is really, really quick and you can exploit a lot of uh, discrepancies, uh, a lot of mispricings, relative stuff with the, uh, with the copula method. And, uh, the, third, uh, and the fourth one uh, that uh, we haven't touched at all today is how do you select pairs for the copulas? And the result does uh, matter, but quite much of what kind of pairs you choose. And so currently people are just using uh, whatever is available uh, that they know, for example, some code integration tests, some Euclidean distance, some Kendall's tau, uh, Spearman's row, and I did provide uh, those uh, together. And there are uh, definitely more advanced um, ML methods for choosing pairs, but there is no specific analysis done on what kind of pair selection criterion that works best for the copulas. So this is another uh, research direction if someone uh, wants to take this on. And there are more uh, stuff that I want to talk about, but uh, given the time limit, I think it's a good time to uh, start here. All right, other to stop here, sorry. Are there any uh, questions from the audience? 